welcome back in this session let us emphasize on using hexadecimal and octal number system rather than talking about how we can obtain those number systems better we talk about why do we need to use such number systems anyhow we do use both binary and decimal but what is this octal and hexa what is the purpose of using either octal and hexa let us have a look at when you talk about uh, binary you know that the binary will be used because the computer system can store only 0 and 1 the computer registers can only understand 0 and 1 because the registers will be comprised of flip flops okay any that is the reason why we do require binary when it comes to decimal we can't avoid it because in day to day life in order to deal with the real world problems we in order to solve the real world problems we use decimal okay so radix 2 radix 10 we already are familiar with but what about this octal and hexa why do we actually require it let us stay focused for that let me take the help of how the processors are actually designed let me show you let me start with intel 8086 i think these numbers making some sense 8086 is considered to be the mother of all the processors right it's a processor it's a processor chipset in the earlier days of computing 8086 was considered to be the best processor it is mother of all the processors what we are using right now okay so what is 8086 8086 is a 16 bit processor when you look at the configuration of the 8086 it is going to tell you that i am a 16 bit processor what is a 16 bit processor 16 bit processor meaning one word size one word in system is equal to 16 bits what is one word every time when you design a processor first of all you need to specify the size of the word because any time will have to be represented in one word so for that i do require a storage element which is equal to 16 bits in 8086 if you want to store one word you do require 16 bits together okay that location could be either a processor's register or it could be a memory location meaning where you can store the data this data can be stored essentially in two places one is within the processor's register you know that a processor will have some internal logic of registers every processor will provide you with some registers okay and also you do have something called a main memory let us say this is the main memory when it comes to the 8086 one location in the main memory is equal to 16 bits similarly one word within the processor will also be equal to 16 bits okay so when you want to store the data the minimum uh, the data rather the maximum data that can be stored in any register is equal to 16 bits okay now keep it aside let us evolve let us go to the next generation processors from 8086 when you move ahead to the next generation processor 8086 had led to one processor called ia32 which is called pentium series pentium okay from 8086 the next successful processor was pentium series in the technical terms it was also referred to as ia32 what is ia32 architecture of course as you interpreted correctly ia32 architecture 
is a 32 bit processor what is a 32 bit processor let me show you once again if it is a 32 bit processor then one word is equal to 32 bit what this word this word could be a processor's register or a memory location memory location both are equal to 32 bits so the minimum and the maximum size of a data element will be equal to 32 digits that is either you require to store a zero you require total 32 bits meaning you want to represent a zero you want to store a zero in one of the locations so that i mean you need to require 32 zeros no matter finally it will be equal to a single zero but as a 32 bit register requires all the flip flops within it within that specific register needed some value you do require 32 bit value to be stored in any any register or a memory location right similarly the maximum value will also be equal to 32 bits that is more than 32 bits you won't be able to represent right yeah let us go to a 64 bit processor needless to say one word is equal to 64 bits okay so here fine one word size is equal to 64 bits the example for a 64 bit processor will be equal will be i3 i5 i7 or snapdragon i think uh, snapdragon is perhaps uh, the most successful processor in a mobile computing system after which um, we also do have some helio processors helio is considered to be somewhat uh, inferior than snapdragon but nevertheless all these processors are proven to be very successful i3 i5 i7 when it comes to the laptops and desktops snapdragon and helio are successful in mobile systems okay your mobile phones now all these processes are of 64 bits one word is equal to 64 bits fine here why we are talking about this bit configuration why we are talking about this bit size simple being a programmer you always will need to have to deal with either 16 bit or 32 bits or 64 bits according to the size of the processor if you deal with 8086 you need to deal with 16 bit data all the time when you deal with the 30 bit 32 bit processor intel pentium or celeron you do need to require to deal with 32 bit data but at the same time if you're dealing with i3 i5 i7 you need to deal with 64 bit data all right let me tell you something anyhow representing a value in the computer system depends on the program he has to use 64 bits 32 bits and a 16 bit designer and a program now the problem is i will tell you let us say you have to show one operation which is happening in the computer system on a paper that is sometimes it is needed for a designer or a programmer to represent a specific operation which is happening in the system on a paper at that time imagine how difficult it would be for you to show all the 16 bits of a register that is r1 r1 that is register 1 transferring a value to register 2 register 1 is of 64 bits register 2 is also of 64 bits now how are you going to show all the 64 bits one side transferred to all the 64 bits another side okay so altogether you do require 128 bits to be put on a paper how difficult and cumbersome it is it is quite inconvenient in order to represent something on a paper we do need some shortened form we do need a compressed form and we do need a compact form for that reason we are going to use we are going to use two different two number systems one is octal and one more is hexadecimal one is octal and one more is hexadecimal 
Now, before we talk about this octal and hexa, let us talk about one more problem of representation. System, as you know that, will be equipped with a memory. In the system, there is memory. The memory will come up with a size. Let us say, my computer system, let us say in, our, in my laptop, the size of the main memory, the RAM, is equal to, size is equal to, let us say, 16 GB. 16 GB. If it is equal to 16 GB, I do require 34 address digits. What is this address digits? Let me tell you. Let us keep these address digits aside. Now, let us have a look at the main memory. In the main memory, there will be some locations. The total locations are equal to 16 GB, let us say. In order to represent each and every location, I do require an address. What is the address? Address is a label of each and every location. First location, this is the zeroth location, and this is the final location. In order to give a label to each and every location, I do require some address digits. Let us talk about something. Let us talk something about the address digits. Let us say I do have a main memory which is just equal to four words. Which is just equal to four words. Now, in order to represent each and every memory location, I do require some address digits, right? As 4 is equal to 2 power 2, I do require two address digits. By using two address digits, I will be able to represent all the locations within the main memory. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right? Anything more than 4, I do require three digits. The total main memory size is equal to 8. So, total number of address digits will be equal to 3. Similarly, in my main memory, there are a total of 16 G locations. So for that, I do require a total of 34 address digits because 16 GB is equal to 2 power 34. Okay. So this main memory require a 34 bit address. Okay. Inside, of course, the word length will be equal to the processor size. Let us say this is i7 processor. And the memory size is equal to 16 GB. Every memory address will be of 34 digits. Inside, as it is I7, one word is equal to 64 bits. Okay. Now, tell me how difficult it is to represent, to represent a data word which is available at a specific location. You need to club 34 bit address plus 64 bit data. Is it possible to represent 34 plus 64? That is 98 uh, digits on a paper. It is quite impossible. Simply writing binary format on a paper is quite cumbersome. For that reason, what we're going to do is we will use either octal or hexa, which allows us to compress all these you know, available binary digits in a short tend form. For that reason, we will either use octal or hexa. Okay. How the octal and hexa are going to compress the binary digits, we will see in the upcoming sessions.